Hey everybody, I'm Angela Walters. Welcome to this week's live chat. I'm excited to talk about quilting like I do almost every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. If you're catching this live, welcome. And if you are watching live, if you have any questions about the things I'm talking about, leave them in the chat because Jessica is here as always monitoring the chat and write those down for me so I can answer them at the end. I think that's one of the cool things about the live chat is to be able to interact and answer your questions live. But if you're not able to watch it live, you're catching this later, no worries. Leave your questions in the comment and I'll get to them to answer them as soon as I can. Um, this week's live chat, we're gonna be talking about continuous curve quilting. And I'm gonna show you tons of pictures and a lot of um, options for that technique. Real quick before we start, I do wanna tell you, I put together a free downloadable PDF with step-by-step -step diagrams, just because I love you. So check that out. It's gonna be in the description box below. So if you wanna click the link and you can download that if you find it helpful. And um, every once in a while, I have a little bit of a special or a, a special deal. And today I have some scrap bags, half price this week only. These aren't just any scrap bags. They are all fabric that I have designed. So if you get one and you think there's an ugly piece of fabric in it, don't tell me because I designed it. Uh, and again, that's in the link in the description box below. Only this week, half price. All right, so um, when it comes to continuous curve, this is a technique that will take you so far. I mean, this is something I've used from day one all the way up until now. So I'm excited to show you uh, some pictures and kind of go over it. First, real quick, uh, I like to share upcoming events as well. And I've got some exciting news. I haven't told anybody but Jessica and a few employees. Nobody else really knows yet. Um, I'm excited that Tula Pink is going to be the featured guest of our quilt walk on June 18th. So here at our downtown Liberty, which is where our quilt shop is outside of Kansas City, Missouri, Tula is going to come do an English paper piecing demo, an exhibit, and a meet and greet slash book signing. I had to pull, use all my friend cred, all my friend points to get this in. So um, she's not traveling right now. So if you wanna see her, this is the way to do it. So uh, the quilt walk is a really fun outdoor event that we started here where you can wander through the shops, cute little stores of downtown Liberty and get the parts of an exclusive quilt pattern I put together for you. And of course, get to meet the amazing Tula Pink. So if you're gonna be in the area June 18th, if you can be in the area June 18th, I hope you'll stop by and um, meet her and, and participate that participate in that. For more details, check out our website, quiltingismytherapy.com, and there is, uh, it's listed under the events. So very, very excited. Okay, now that I have that aside, again, you won't see the Tula on there because you are literally the first people I told. I didn't even tell Jessica I was telling you. So very, very new um, information. So very, very excited about that. All right, let's talk about continuous curve, the thing that we're actually here to talk about. Um, I like to say, and I totally believe this, if you can learn the swirl meander, and continuous curve, I feel like you can quilt any quilt that you can think of. It's just one of those techniques that looks great on all different size blocks. It works great on modern quilts, traditional quilts, big blocks, little blocks, you name it. I won't go into all the detail, but this picture kind of shows you what the basic continuous curve template or design is. I'm basically quilting a line that curves from one point or one corner of my block to the next corner and on around until I come back to my starting point. So as you can tell, it adds a nice curvy softness to your quilt and you can do it without marking. But I would argue the most important thing about this particular design is you come back to the starting point. So as I quilt my block and work my way around, I end up where I started and that's really great when I wanna quilt efficiently around the quilt. Now, I'm gonna show you so many variations and so many different ways to use this. I really had to rein myself in with the pictures because I knew like this is only a 30 minute chat. I can't take four hours to show you all the pictures. But the one thing I wanna say before we even get into any of that is the basic of this design is this right here. And as long as you can kind of wrap your mind around that, you can eventually get the rest of them. Now. When you're working with continuous curve, um, there's a couple things that people tend to freak out about that I don't think that they should. So if you look at this particular design, I'm not worried about my curved lines being perfectly curved on each side. I'm not worried that um, my stitches are all the same length. Instead, what I'm focusing on is trying as hard as I can to get that line to end in the corner. 
That means as I'm quilting this design or any of the designs I'm going to show you, my eye isn't looking at the needle. It's looking where I'm heading, whether it's the corner or a point that I've marked, and I'm just trusting my hands to get there. Do not stress about the curves. They will work themselves out. Just focus on the corners or the point you're trying to hit. And I promise when you're quilting, you might think, oh, this one's not on. This doesn't look right. But when you step back, an amazing thing kind of happens. Your eyes kind of make it look all perfect and you see the overall pattern. I promise, promise, promise. You just have to trust me and get to that point. Now the basic continuous curve is really suited for smaller blocks. I say that because I don't want to quilt really big, long, extended curves. I'll show you how to work your way around that here in a second. But think of like Irish chains, uh, regular two inch square blocks, setting corners, pieced blocks. I mean, I, again, I can go on and on, um, but just know that you're going to really see this design shine in those areas. Now, when I have multiple squares though, remember I said I love continuous curve because it comes back to the starting point. I have that curvy look. If I want to quilt a whole grouping of them, I can go about it a little differently so that I don't have to start and stop at each square or travel in between them. So I'm going to show you how you can handle a larger group. Again, this is in that downloadable PDF, so you can download it and kind of break it down a little bit slower than I'm going to work through it. But just know that you don't have to quilt one block at a time. You can go through multiples. So let's look at a basic nine patch and how I would go about quilting this particular design in that area. The thing I try to remember when I'm quilting continuous curve is once I close off or do my fourth side, I'm, I'm gonna return where I'm at. So I don't wanna finish any one block until I finish all the blocks. So instead of looking at it as an individual square, I'm kind of looking at the perimeter and using that as my guide. So starting in whichever corner I start in, I'm gonna quilt my curve to the next line and I'm kind of staring at that seam it's that first vertical seam. So from there, I'm gonna quilt my way down and then quilt my way back up. So you might notice I kind of serpentined down and I serpentined back up. The only reason I do that is it guarantees where they come together, they're gonna cross, even if that's not perfectly at the point and I just think it looks better. Um, but however, you could do one side and come back the other, whatever, it's gonna be fine. Once I have that vertical done, I'm gonna continue working my way across the perimeter and then do my next vertical. So it's a little bit trickier because I'm going about it a little bit differently, but it's gonna be a lot more efficient once you get the hang of it. So now that I've got my vertical lines done, I'm gonna use those curves to work my way around the corner and then start focusing on the horizontal. Again, working my way across and back, down and repeating. So here you can see this is kind of where I'm at after I've done my verticals and my horizontals. You know that I, I'll know that I'm not finished because I have not reached the starting point. That's how you'll know that you are finished. So if you're like, I don't know, where do I go from here? If you're not where you started, you still have some more curves to quilt. So from that point, then all I'm gonna do is continue working around the perimeter until I get back to the starting point and I have all my beautiful continuous curves. Now, this is an illustration that I did on my computer, so it's nice and perfect, but I promise once you're done, you're just gonna have that beautiful overall look. All right, so let's see some actual quilts or some more examples of it. This is like my um, persuasive argument to make you love this design. It works great in nine patch blocks, and I really, really love combining it with geometric lines. So that block in the middle has some geometric kind of crosses and then the curves, so I love it when using it with a contrasting design because it really kind of makes it pop. Now you can tell if you look closely that not all those curves are the same on each side, but it still looks nice and beautiful when it's done and I, I was super happy with it. Obviously because, you know, I'm showing you. Um, you can also use this in different arrangements. So this is where we're going to start picking up steam pretty quick. You don't have to do all the corners. You can tell in the squares, I have the traditional continuous curve, but if you look at those white triangles that are around it, or the green ones, I've only connected two of the corners. So as you start working with this design in different shapes, you're gonna learn some different ways to use it and different shapes that you can create. So it doesn't have to just be squares, it can be anything with corners or any mark or any points that you determine that you wanna use it. And we'll see examples of that here in a second. Now, you remember I said, oh, I love it in smaller blocks. The reason I don't use that basic continuous curve in larger blocks is 
well, because I, I love quilting my stuff to death. You know that if you've watched any of my live chats. Quilt it till there's too much and put more on it has always been my motto. So for those larger squares, if I still, if I feel like it's not quite enough, I can add another echo line. And it's kind of hard to see, but if you look in the print squares of this quilt, I've quilted my first set of continuous curve and I just added another echo of that on the inside. And that's just gonna help give me some more density to my quilting. Again, I'm trying to make those corners match up, but I'm not stressing out about it. I'm just trying to um, fill it in as much as possible. So you can add echo lines if you want. But for those larger blocks, as they get bigger and bigger, that means our curves are gonna get longer and that's just sometimes more difficult to sustain even on a big throated sewing machine or even on a long arm. So instead of quilting big curves, I'll do more of a flowery motif because it allows me to break it up and, and quilt them a little bit shorter but still make a really cool design. And I know some of these pictures aren't the best. I was trying to get a range of quilts, but if you look in the print um, octagon shaped block, you can see that kind of continuous curve in there. And we're gonna talk about how to quilt that. Um, but that's just how I would manage those larger blocks without quilting bigger curves. So this was a quilt I did for Jackie Gehring of Tallgrass uh, Prairie Studio. And it was so fun because she didn't want any feathers on her quilt. Well, I gave her a flower. So I figured it's curvy, it's nice, it's close enough. So let's see how that works. If you think about continuous curve, I'm using the corners as my dots or my points I'm trying to match. Here, I'm using the corners, but I'm also using the center. So what that means is all my lines are gonna come to the center. So starting from the center, I'm going out to the outside and back. And then I decide, you know what, if I wanna add a little bit more, I can look to the middle of my block, middle of the edge, and go out and back like we see in that second picture. Then continue my way around to the corner, and then to the middle, next corner, so on and so forth until I finish the whole block. Now, what's great about this technique is it's really, really gonna draw attention to the center of your block. So I wanna use this in an area that I like or that has busier fabric because it's nice and quick to quilt. Now, for those of you out there that are newer to quilting or don't like just winging it like I do, you can mark out the design beforehand, but once you have all the lines marked, it can be kind of overwhelming to know where to go next. So I would suggest either marking out a couple steps at a time or getting the designs with line stencil. It has a, like an X and a plus. You can quickly mark those reference lines so you can get to the center um, without marking the whole design. Ultimately though, whatever you will do is what you should do. Now in this particular example, I started in the center and since the continuous curve design here is going to bring me back to my starting point, that means I'm gonna end in my center. If I want to avoid that, I can start on a corner and then continue from there. So you don't have to always start in the center, it just worked out better for that illustration. So with this flower motif or this continuous curve motif, you can add as many of those individual petals, we'll call them, as you want, depending on how big the block is or how, how much you love the person you're quilting it for. Um, in this particular example, this is a little block I quilted for our Build a Quilt Block of the Month. I put it right there in the center. It's one of my favorite places to put this particular design. In the middle of a piece block or in the middle of something like that, it just kind of helps draw attention to the center. But I do want to point out in the gold thinner border, that's a continuous curve design, just a different shape. So instead of doing a curved line, I've done more of a bracket shape. Again, this is another way that you can break up those bigger curves and make them a little bit easier to quilt. So play around with the shape of your curve or what you're working with and you can come up with some fun variations as well. All right, in this particular quilt, you can see in the bigger gold blocks, there's that flower motif. Once you start looking at quilts I've done, you'll see this over and over and over again because it's just so fast and easy, especially in those busier fabrics. Um, I've done it in those smaller uh, teal blocks because again, it's fast and easy and it looks so great but I've also broken up that motif and used it in other shapes. So it's great in squares, but it works just as beautifully in triangles or other blocks. And the reason being, well here real quick, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, you can combine the continuous curve with other techniques as well. Sorry, jumped ahead. Uh, in the center of this block, you can see that beautiful flower motif, but it's also been combined with some dot to dot quilting. So just like I like with the, the basic continuous curve technique. I love it. Again, combining that curve with the geometric, it just looks so good. 
And don't think it has to just be in squares. Again, you can use these in all different shapes of blocks, especially if you have stuff like this that you know, you're know you like, I don't know what I would normally quilt in a multi-sided block. Well, somebody's already taken the time to make that those pieces. I just have to connect those points and draw attention to the center. So again, really, really versatile technique. Okay, but you can use it in other ways to help yourself move around the quilt. And if you think about the regular technique, I start and end at the same place. Sometimes that's great. That's what I want for the quilt I'm working on. But sometimes I want to be able to move on or end in the opposite place so that I can continue on. So when I'm looking at my quilt and I'm trying to pick my designs, the first thing I ask myself is, where do I need to go? And then I pick the design that will help me get there. Now, I know some of you are newer to quilting. You're like, I am just trying to quilt a curve. Don't worry about this part yet. This is something that you can start to build up and kind of work towards as you get comfortable with the technique. So in these squares, the lighter green squares, we can see I have that same flowery motif. The difference is, instead of those lines coming to the center of my block, they're coming to one of the corners. And that just means I'm gonna start on one side and as I work my way across, I'm gonna end on the opposite side. So very, very helpful if I have multiple blocks or blocks on point. Also helpful if I wanna draw attention to a particular area. Where all those lines come together, it's gonna be a little bit more dense quilting that's really gonna draw attention to that area. So in this particular example, having all those lines come to the center just helps draw your eye to the center of the block. I also, also love this technique in stars or any shape or any block that's repeating because I get this really cool, you know, uh, motif look, but I don't have to spend too much time on it, I just kind of use those points as my reference. So I'm using the outer kind of points of the star, I'm using the center, but also where those uh, diamonds meet, you can kind of see those different curves. Now I'm gonna break this down here in just a little bit and we'll see it step by step, but just know, man, it is great for those kind of areas. And like I've already shown you two other times, I love, love combining it with geometric shapes. There's just something about that contrast that helps kind of separate it and helps it kind of pop off of each other. So slightly different variation combined with some dot to dot um, in the yellow with the continuous curve. So really, I mean, if you're working on sampler quilts, this is gonna be great because it's gonna help you fill in all those different shaped blocks with the same technique. Now in the center of this particular block, I have that continuous curve, but I added an echo inside. Um, I didn't have any of my arcs overlap. Again, same technique, just slightly different look. So if you need a challenge, sit down and see how many different continuous curve variations you can come up with, because I, I think you'll see that you can come up with quite a bit. Um, quarter square triangles or these particular like square triangles coming together, again, you can group multiple blocks together to create those different effects. And I can't tell you how much fun it is when you're working on a quilt with a lot of different blocks to come up with different variations. What it's gonna do is it's gonna keep the quilting pretty consistent and cohesive, but allow you to quilt each different block a little bit differently if you want to. Now you can also use it in partial blocks, little tiny blocks. This was a little English paper piecing quilt. I think this is Tula Pink Nova when I was working on it for her. I love how it rotates around. It draws attention um, to the center. And again, the more dense you want the quilting, the more of those petals that you can add to the design. And then once you have that down, just do it in all of them. I can't say this enough though, I'm not worried about the arcs, I'm trying to make them all land on the point that I want them to land on. So put your eye on that point and trust your hands to bring you there. And this particular, is just another example in that white, um, you can see some geometric quilting and then using that continuous curve around it. Or in the green hexagons, combining it there. So just some different variations, different ways to use it. Um, I think it's just so much fun, it's the same technique, it's just a lot of difference. All right, when we take out that round motif, and we just take out a section and when we use it in a triangle, this is where we can see that design really kind of progress and go in a direction for us. So I love to use this as a way to create you know, a direction in the quilting, or again, to move from one design to the next. Um, quilting is so much fun and I love it, but I want it to be efficient and I wanna be able to move my way through the quilt without lots of starts and stops because I find them annoying, so there's that. And Depending on how much you want to do, you can really take this technique and make it over the top. You can add lots of geometric, you can add extra petals, you can use it in so many different ways. 
um, but it's still the same basic technique. And if anybody did the help, how do I quilt it free motion challenge, a lot of these pictures are from that, that very challenge right there. All right, so let's talk about how we're gonna work through this in a triangle. It's basically the same as a square, it's just our reference point here is gonna be in the center of one of the sides of the triangle. So starting in the farthest corner, I've decided, hmm, I'm gonna quilt my curve to this point. And then as you look through, you can see the next steps. I'm gonna go out to the middle and back, out to the top and back, out to the side and back, and then continue on. So here is where we see it, start on one side and end on the other, so I can work my way through a series of blocks. If I just quilted a regular continuous curve that <coughs> curved to one there and back, then I'd have to travel or add another design, which I do sometimes, to continue on. So this would be a great example right here. I have my triangles, I can quilt one into the next, into the next, and then just quickly continue on in quilting that. So um, it's not only fun, it not only looks great, but it can be an efficient way to work your way through the quilt if you pick the right designs. Now, we've seen squares, we've seen triangles, we've seen octagons, hexagons, all the fun things, um, but diamonds as well. So as you're looking at a block, you're gonna pick which point do I want all the lines to come to, and where do I want those petals to land? And I try really hard to keep it symmetrical. Not perfect, symmetrical. If I have a petal hitting the middle of this side, I want a petal hitting the middle of the next side as well. I want it to be symmetrical because our brains see symmetry as perfection. So even if those curves aren't perfect, even if they don't land in the perfect spot, it's still gonna be symmetrical and it's still gonna look great. This would be a quilted example of that particular quilt. Again, I'm able to start at one point and end on the other so that I can continue on my happy quilting way, just depending on the particular quilt I'm working on. This was pieced by Julie Herman and it's her boomerang quilt pattern. Uh, I try really hard to give credit when I can remember who I quilted it for, but some of these quilts are, are kind of older. Okay, so so far I haven't talked about rulers. I freehand all my continuous curves, again, because you know I'm not worried about making those curves perfect, but if you are not like me and you have a little bit more of an attention to detail or it makes you feel nice and cozy at night to know that your curves are all the same, um, I do have the Elvira ruler that will help you quilt continuous curves into inch squares. Or you can use an arc ruler or another uh, gentle curved ruler. That's gonna help you uh, achieve that symmetry, um, but try not to be too worried about perfection. We're just trying to get it as close as we can. Uh, for the Elvira, if you want to use that particular ruler, if you have it, it's, it's fun because it does a lot of different things. Uh, but I did put together a downloadable PDF on how to use that ruler to make continuous curves, and that is also on the link in the description box below. So you can click that one link, will take you to all the things you need for this video. So yes, you can use rulers if you want. If it's gonna be a high visible area, you're quilting for a show, you really wanna show off your amazing quilting, perfect, you can, you can definitely do that. Now in this particular, recipes are kind of like, how do you take this technique in and move it up? Like how do we build off of it? And so using it in piece blocks in multiple ways. So this particular block, I know it's kind of up close, um, but it's the perfect example of where to use continuous curve. A pieced block with triangles and squares and, and all the things is gonna be perfect for this. So in the center, just a basic continuous curve. I love the little scissors in the middle. I didn't want the quilting to take away from that. But then in the triangles to be able to move my way around the block using different variations there. So again, you can really combine this in those piece blocks and come up with some fun different things. Or how about blocks that aren't your typical shape, right? So this is a particular quilt I did for Tula Pink. Um, you can see it's English paper piece. It's got these little hexagons. It might be hard to see, but that blue ring, there's the center and then that blue ring, those are all pieced hexagons. Instead of fighting or trying to figure it out, I just put some pebbles in the top and bottom and quilted continuous curves in the rings around it. So I actually took a couple of minutes, well, it took about an hour, but I took step-by-step -step diagram so you could see how this goes together, just to, I don't know, kind of see it in action. So when I'm looking at this block, I've decided that my points are gonna be the outside and the middle of the center hexagon, right? So it's not necessarily a corner, but it is a point that I have deemed is gonna be my connecting point. You could mark that out if you want, but this was like an inch hexagon. I figured it's close enough. I can just eyeball it. So starting from the outside, I'm gonna quilt a line that goes to my next point, which is the middle of one of the sides of the center. From there, I've decided, okay, now I wanna go to the middle of the opposite side. So I'm gonna quilt a line that curves there and then back. 
again, you can mark this out. You can take the time beforehand to sketch it out, see if you like how it looks. But this is kind of how I decided to do, to do this one. And I returned back to that side. So this is looking pretty familiar, right? We've seen this shape a million times. I'm not showing you anything you haven't seen. But then my next line is going to go to the opposite side where those hexagons come together. So that is the individual shape that makes up what I'm going to quilt in all the rest of the hexagons. But here's what's fun. You get that whole thing comes together. You get that really cool secondary effect. So from there, it's time to continue on to the next one, to the middle to, of the next side, out to the middle of the opposite side, and then continuing on. So as you're working through, you can make out a plan, but sometimes just picking a couple points, quilting curves that go to them, will help you create that design. So not only does, that, does it look cool, it helps draw attention to the center, but as I work my way around, I end up where I started so that I can continue on quilting the next part of the block. I have this kind of custom shape that looks great on this quilt, and it was just fun to quilt. So you, like I said, you can pick your different points that you want to connect. You can, you can do whatever you want. Your imagination is the only limit. All right, one last. Uh, Two things real quick. This picture shows continuous curve in a pieced border. Well, actually, I think this is a fabric strip, but you can use continuous curves in other shapes as well. So don't just think you have to put it in your star blocks or your square blocks. Look at those other areas, and I'm sure you can find some different ways to use it. Now, if you have questions, if you're watching live, start typing them out because Jessica's writing them down. But before we went live, I get on there and we type chat before um, I go live on there. And Sandra asked if I would show pictures of the Stardust quilt I did on the Midnight Quilt Show. So this is the best way to get me to do stuff, people. Just ask me during you know, the type chat. And sure. So I pull those together real quick. Examples of the continuous curve that will be in your handout. I'm jumping ahead. Oh, sorry. So the handouts will have this. I just want to show you that you can make it as, as uh, complicated as you want. And it looks great in your blocks. OK. This is the star, uh, Stardust quilt that was on the Midnight Quilt Show back in 2019. And um, she wanted to see some pictures of the actual quilted quilt. So I pulled those up real quick. There's no continuous curve in here, so it doesn't really apply to what we're talking about. Um, but it's just a fun example of a really bright, fun quilt. Um, there's a lot of negative space in this quilt, so I had fun um, creating secondary blocks in it. I used two different threads. That green thread just made me so happy but also some hot pink, you know, to really show it off. And then in the rest of the quilt, I just did it easy all over. So when you're looking at your quilts, you don't have to do difficult stuff over the whole quilt. Um, pick a couple places to put your emphasis and then have fun on the rest. So here you can kind of see those pieced blocks and then that nice um, wavy back and forth line. So um, there you go, Sandra, that's just for you. Not on topic, but you know, it's kind of fun to be able to change it up. So. Back to continuous curve, if you've never tried it, I hope you'll give it a try. If you're like, yeah, I've done continuous curve a lot, I hope you'll try some of the variations and, and really make that technique work for you because it can work in a lot of great quilts. All right, Jessica, do we have some questions? Yay. All right, here's the bad news, guys, though. I'm not going to be here next week. So I'm going to be in San Diego, so excited, doing a retreat. I saw that a couple of my um, live chat watchers were going to be there. So I won't be here on Thursday. Well, I won't be on the retreat on Thursday, but I will be out of town. I'll be back the next week. Um, question, do I need to register for the quilt walk? You don't have to. You can just show up. No tickets are necessary, but we do have a Facebook event if you want to let us know you're coming. Just nice to know when you're throwing a party how many people are planning to come, um, and it's going to be a great time. You can also just check out the website. It will have details, and then I'm going to add more now that I can announce that, that Tula is going to be there. It seems that continuous curves make the seams pop up. Doesn't it help to stitch in the ditch first? Perfect question. It depends. Come on. If you watch any of my live chats, you know that's the answer. It does. So since it's drawing attention to the corners, it is going to, um, those, those seams are going to come up a little bit just like it does in the center, not in a way that's um, really glaring. I don't stitch along the seams if it's a big area of squares and it's just something I'm doing. That's my preference, but if it is part of a star, part of a block, part of a focal point, then I will stitch in the seams just to help it lay nice and flat. It also depends like how intricate and how small the block is as well. If it's really tiny, I might not because I might not want to take away from it. Um, so I guess the short answer is like, it depends on the quilt. But if I'm doing this as a technique to hurry up and get the quilt done, show off the blocks and move on, then I probably won't. What's the largest size I would use a continuous curve 
I'm just guessing the basic without breaking up the area. 3.7624 inches. No, I'm just kidding. That's um, three inches is about as big as I like, maybe four inch. It depends on the machine I'm working on. If I'm on my long arm, it's a little bit easier to get those fluid curves down. If I'm on my sewing machine, a little bit smaller. Um, it just, it really depends on your preferences. So I would say for me, the largest I would use would probably be two inches just because of the, the look of it. I like to quilt things to death. So if I did it in a bigger area, I'd have that whole big unquilted area in the center. So I know that's not a good answer, but it depends. When I'm using rulers, what should the stitch length be on a domestic machine? Your stitch length should not be so large that your toe will get stuck in the quilt when you pull it over you. Okay, again, I'm kidding. You know, I got, they're all jokes, they're just not all funny. Um, stitch length when you're quilting on your sewing machine or your long arm, with your rulers or without, is up to you. I don't use a stitch regulator on either one of my machines, so I have what you would call a more organic stitch length. Um, but for newer quilters or for new long armor, long arm owners have just bought their machine from me and I'm talking them through it, I usually say a good rule of thumb, if you want a rule, is um, 10 to 12 inches. 12, 10 to 12 stitches per inch. <laughs> 10 to 12 inches per stitch, that would be weird. No, 10 to 12 stitches per inch. It's just, it's gonna, you know, look nice, but it's not gonna be too big, but it's not gonna be so small that if you have to rip it out, it takes forever. Um, if you find using rulers or any longer design that you tend to move faster, or you outrun the motor of your machine, you can you know, make less stitches per inch, so it's a little bit bigger. But it's when you get to those smaller shapes, like pebbles, that you might wanna add more stitches per inch so you get those nice, tight circles. Again, it just depends. It's a preference thing, and um, it just depends on how you like how it looks. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right, if you have any questions about continuous curve, remember, you can leave them in the um, comments below. I get on there from time to time to answer them. And if you wanna get that downloadable PDF or you wanna get the discounted scrap bag for limited time only or the Elvira stuff, you can just check the link in the description box below. Remember, I'm not gonna be here next week, but I will be here the week after for our next live chat. I haven't decided the topic yet, so I'll have to get on that and let you know then. But everybody have a safe weekend, stay warm, stay healthy, and I will see you very, very soon. Until then, happy quilting.